Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at this Ryzen 5 laptop. It's the Lenovo IdeaPad S340. Now this is the version that was sold by Best Buy. It's got the Ryzen 5 3500U processor with the Vega 8 graphics on it. It's got 12 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Now this has four gigs that are soldered onto the board and an eight gig DIMM in there. So it does work in dual channel. It's got a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS touchscreen display. It's a beautiful display and a one terabyte SSD. Now we're gonna get into the review of this. I, I'm gonna talk about some of the usage and I'm gonna talk about the good and bad. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you uh, my thoughts on whether this is a good buy or not. First, I wanna talk about the design of this laptop and it is a great design. The laptop looks really nice. It's very light. The bezels around that beautiful 1080p IPS display are very thin. The keyboard is decent to type on. It's not the best keyboard I've ever used. It's not the worst. Keys are a little bit mushy, but I typed all the notes on this. I've typed a bunch of other documents and it was actually a really good uh, experience. As far as flex, there is a little bit of flex on the deck, but it's not too bad and you really don't even notice it when you're typing. On the deck as well is that trackpad. The trackpad is a nice size, uh, good feeling trackpad. It responds really well. I don't really have too much to say about it. It's a decently functioning and a decent size trackpad. The selection of ports on this device is also really nice. On the left side, we have the barrel power connector. We have a full size HDMI, USB-C. Now this is USB 3.1, it's not Thunderbolt. And we also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Around on the right side, we have two USB 3.0 ports and an SDXC card reader. This laptop also comes equipped with a webcam. It's a 720p webcam. Uh, it's not great, it's not terrible. One thing that is nice about this webcam is that it comes with a little slider built into the laptop, so you just slide it uh, to the left or right if you wanna open it or close it. So it's pretty nice that they built this in and you don't have to add one of those aftermarket sticky sliders. The screen is also very nice. Like I said, the bezels are very thin. The screen is beautiful. It's a 1080p IPS display. The viewing angles are great on it. Uh, it could get a little bit brighter, but in most cases, unless you're in like direct sunlight, it's plenty bright enough. So the overall design of the machine is great. There's one piece that is really bad and it brings down the score of this laptop significantly and affects the performance significantly, and that's the storage. Now, the type of storage is a spinning drive and it's not even a 7200 RPM drive, it's a 5400 RPM drive. Now, for those of you that don't know what that means, that is extremely slow storage. It affects everything on the machine. So having a 5400 RPM drive in this machine is a huge mistake by Lenovo, in my opinion. Now, the nice thing is that you can take off the screws on the back, pop it open, and you have access to that hard drive so you can swap it out with an SSD. There's also an M.2 port in there so you can add NVMe storage in there and you can also get to the RAM so you can swap out that RAM and add more RAM to it. So you can swap out that storage, but honestly, the average consumer is gonna go into Best Buy, buy this laptop, take it home, see how ridiculously slow it is, and then return it and not even think to upgrade it or you know maybe not even have the experience or the parts to upgrade it, which is a shame because overall, this is a pretty powerful machine. Now, day-to-day -day performance of this machine is pretty good with the exception of launching applications and things like that that I talked about. Again, that would be rectified with a faster drive, but once things are running, multitasking is great. I, multiple tabs in the browser are nice with the included 12 gigs of uh, dual channel RAM. Everything works really smoothly, even multiple desktops, all that kind of stuff. Just day-to-day -day performance is pretty decent once the applications are running. Now this is not a gaming machine, but I did want to test some games with that Vega 8 GPU and I was actually pretty surprised. The first thing I tested was Seven Days to Die and I tested this at 720p resolution and some of the settings were set to high, some of them were set to low, but I got an average frame per second of 36.2 with a minimum of 9.7 and a max of 52.2. Now on all these benchmarks, you're gonna see a significant minimum uh, frames per second. And in each of these cases, it was when assets were being loaded from the storage that just completely killed the frames. So once that storage is upgraded, that minimum is not gonna be as low as it is in these tests, but this is with the stock configuration. 
Next thing I tested was Doom, and again, this was at 720p. I set everything to the absolute lowest setting, and I got an average frames per second of 42 with a minimum of 29.8 and a max of 55.2. So the last game I tested, I was not expecting to run at all in this machine, but it was actually pretty playable, and that is No Man's Sky. Again, I set it at 720p, set all the settings to the absolute lowest, and got an average frames per second of 27.5, minimum of 1.6, and a max of 42.3. Again, that 1.6 is when it was loading assets, so that slow hard drive just killed killed the uh, minimum right there. But overall, keeping an eye on the frame counter, it was hovering right around 30 frames per second. And in this game, even if it drops a little bit below that, it's just for a second and then comes back up. So it was a playable experience in my opinion. Now, a little caveat here, if your primary goal is gaming, this is not the machine for you. But if you're getting this machine, because of the form factor and everything else that I talked about, and you wanna do some casual gaming, it's totally doable on this computer. So I just wanted to test some video editing and I used uh, DaVinci Resolve to do the testing because that is the application that I do all my editing in. And it was usable, it wasn't a super great experience. If you're doing 4K, you definitely wanna make some proxy files. If you're doing 1080p, you can probably get away without using the proxy files as long as the timeline is not super complicated. Again, upgrading the storage and adding more RAM is gonna help this a little bit, but uh, DaVinci Resolve is very dependent on GPU, and with the Vega 8, it's a powerful integrated GPU, but it's still not as powerful as a dedicated GPU. For video editing, I would say this, again, is usable with those caveats, making proxy files, you know, caching things out as you need to. But in a pinch, uh, you could definitely use this to get some video editing done. There is so much that's great about this machine, the processor, the build, everything that I talked about before, that I really want to say, yeah, this is a fantastic machine. Go out and buy it for 500 bucks, which is what it's listed at Best Buy right now for. And it's a fantastic deal. But that... Spinning hard drive, that 5,400 RBM hard drive just kills it for me. And because of that, at that $500 price point, I would say for most people, this is not a good buy. Uh, you may want to look at the other versions of this that have the SSD or even you know, NVMe drive in it. Uh, they might be a little bit more expensive, but it's going to be a much better experience. If you're somebody like me that doesn't mind swapping out these parts, you can get a fantastic deal on this. I actually got it because it was open box and there was some other hiccups at Best Buy. I was able to get it at about $200 under the uh, currently listed price. So I got it for about 315 bucks, which at that price, it's a good deal, especially since I'm gonna swap out you know, the hardware that's in there already. But for the average person at that $500 price point, I would say this is a no-go and you're better off looking at another machine or one of these machines with a little bit different specs. Hopefully you found this useful and informative. If you have any questions or comments on anything that I talked about, leave those down in the comment section below. Uh, if you have anything that you want me to test on this laptop, let me know that. I'm gonna do some more specific game testing, so I'll probably have a video dedicated to that. And then when I get Linux on it, I'm going to review Linux on this machine on my Linux channel. So I'll leave a link to that as well. Uh, thanks for stopping by and I will see you in the next video.